Hey everyone, Marnix here. Now, when making games, we've always said that the hardware doesn't really matter. As long as you have something that runs Unity or whatever engine that you're using, maybe it'll run a bit slow, but you can always make a good game out of it. Now, that doesn't mean that good hardware isn't good to have in general when working on something, as it will make your life a lot easier and faster to do certain things. And at home, I have quite a good setup. However, as you can see, this is maybe not the default set that you're used to. I'm currently traveling for a few weeks and I'm filming this video from our Airbnb. So that is why it's all a bit messy, but hey, thanks for watching till this video. Um, and that brings me to what I want to talk about. I can't bring my full desktop PC, which is quite good to me. I can't fit it in my suitcase, at my monitor, at my keyboard and everything. So I need a good laptop. Now, for the past few years, I've been running this ThinkPad. It's a 14 inch laptop, but there are quite some flaws with it when it comes to game development. So I started looking for a new laptop. Now, I think I found the perfect laptop to replace this one with, especially for my use case as a game developer and also as a content creator. And since I paid a lot of my own money for it, this is not sponsored at all, unfortunately, I'm still gonna make a video out of it just to get some extra value out of it. So maybe I can also give you some more information into what makes a good laptop in my eyes as well. So as I said, I'm currently traveling and over the next few months, I'm actually planning on traveling a lot more, which you'll see in some upcoming videos as well. And in which case, this ThinkPad is not gonna cut it. I'll give you a quick rundown of the specs. I upgraded to 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's running a fourth generation Ryzen CPU, eight core in it and it's a 1080p screen, 14 inches, and it has a really good I.O. But there's something missing. This laptop has no GPU, no graphics card. And when I run Unity or something, this laptop really hates my life. And also because it's so small, working on things like Blender, for example, or in Unity is really slow, really frustrating to work with, and generally not a good experience to do anything. I also once tried to edit one video on this uh, laptop. Well, that laptop nearly decided to kill itself, once again, because of the lack of dedicated graphics. So since then, I used to be always forced to edit videos at home. Now, when I'm going for this long of a period, I can't pre-record this many videos. So I needed something that I could edit on the go with. So that's why I ended up with this. The ASUS ProArt, I'll probably put on some B-roll right now, uh, Studio Box 16. It's a really good laptop. As you can see, I currently am holding the script up here, but whatever. And I think that in my opinion, this is probably one of the best laptops as a creative and as a game developer. Now, before I go into why I got that laptop, maybe I'll talk about why I bought this laptop first. One of the things that I find really important is good IO. So this one has an ethernet port, has two USBs. It has two USB-Cs as well, and an HDMI and a micro SD card reader. Back when I bought this laptop three years ago, this fit all of my needs basically. This also has a smart card reader, which is really good for um, if you're in Belgium to do identity verification with. But as I said, no GPU was really a deal breaker and also the small screen. So I spent a lot of time looking for a new laptop. And when I went to, for example, the game jam where I could see all of the game development students, see what they were running, I was kind of surprised to see how many of them were actually just carrying around big clunky laptops that were just gamer computers. Whereas I figured that, you know, as a college student or whatever else, especially in game dev, you're going to have to put quite a bit of budget down because you need a good, powerful computer for 3D simulation or for game development, stuff like that. May as well spend a little bit more and get something that's also a little bit more sleek and carryable. Then my eye fell onto the ProArt. I know ASUS, their ProArt line, they originally started with, I think, displays to have the really calibrated displays that are really nice. And this one also has a really good display. We'll get into that. But this one is basically a 16 inch laptop. This one currently has a fifth gen Ryzen CPU in it and a RTX 3060 graphics card. There is a new version coming at some point um, that I originally wanted to wait for, but that one has been delayed to, if you're watching this, supposedly the end of 2020 which I just couldn't wait for anymore. But this is still plenty of powerful compared to my old ThinkPad. If we start on the outside, as I said before, IO is really important. This one once again has two USB type A ports, two USB type C's, one HDMI, one ethernet. And what this one also has that I found really important now that I was working with video so often is a 
full-sized SD card reader and this SD card reader even supports SD Express. Even though I don't really have any cards for it, it would theoretically allow me to transfer up to nearly one gigabyte a second to this laptop from my camera. Another big thing why I bought this one is the screen. This one has a 4K OLED screen, which is honestly beautiful. It's also 16 by 10 ratio, which makes it even nicer for me to work with as I simply have a little bit more space in whether I'm using Premiere or if I'm using something like Unity. Some other external factors I would like to talk about still is it's quite big, but that's for a 16 inch laptop to be expected. Now, weight wise, this laptop is a bit on the heavier size because of course it is still very powerful. Also, it has a 240 watt charger, which is also quite big in its own regard. And I wanna say that this is not a great laptop to carry around wherever you want. This old ThinkPad, it was light. I don't know the exact weight, but I always had this with me in my backpack. It was easy. I never really noticed when I was carrying it. The Studio Book definitely has a lot more weight to it and I can really notice if I'm bringing it along with me. So if you're just looking for something to take notes on or whatever, this is probably not the laptop for you. However, if you're like me, just needing something that's more of a mobile workstation that you need to be able to transport easily, but you won't be taking out day by day to go to a cafe or to go wherever to work with, then the weight isn't really a problem in my case. Fits in all of my backpacks also without problems still. So I'm quite happy in that regard. And then one last thing is when I bought this laptop, um, I bought it with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD storage. You can actually upgrade both of those. There is a second NVMe slot in which I put an extra two terabyte SSD because I'm working with so many video files. And I also upgraded the memory to 32 gigabytes because 16 isn't really enough for my workload nowadays. And I would suggest you to do the same. Don't worry though, replacing those two components is really easy. The only thing that I kind of was disappointed by is that the network module, which is as far as I know, Wi-Fi 6, so no Wi-Fi 6E, is soldered onto the motherboard, so I could not upgrade that one. Now, as we open up the laptop to maybe see a bit more about what's it all about, the first thing that you will notice is the display and how stunning it is. So I said before, it's a 4K OLED, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 60 Hertz, but there is also a second version um, of this laptop available in certain markets with a 1440p display that goes up to 120 hertz, but it's an IPS. And what this OLED also gives you is 100% coverage of the DCI-P3 colors spectrum. I don't fully know what that means, but I do know that this is a really beautiful laptop just to look at. Then we have the keyboard. This keyboard took a little bit longer to get used to because it's slightly offset compared to what I was used to from my ThinkPad, as this one also has a full-size number pad built in. I do like number pads, so I don't really mind. And after basically two days, I was already used to the change. Keyboard itself is pretty good to type on. I come from a ThinkPad and one of the main selling points of a ThinkPad is just how amazing their keyboards are. And in general, I would say that these are also very good, although they are a bit different in the, how they work compared to the ThinkPad, but I haven't had any problems really typing for long periods of time, for example. Then of course, we have the star of the show or what makes this laptop truly unique compared to basically all of the other laptops and that's the ASUS dial. So what this is, is it's a little round dial that is positioned right below the keyboard where your left thumb would normally put rest. And you can use it for a variety of shortcuts. I'll get back into the actual software and usage part of all of it, but it's a really nice feeling thing. And because it's just perfectly placed at your thumb, it's also something that you are enticed to use quite often because it's just natural. And then lastly, if we go completely down, we have a big touchpad. Two big things that I like here. First of all, is you have a dedicated middle mouse button. For normal day-to-day -day use, it may not seem that good, but for example, in Blender or in Unity, when you wanna do certain 3D mouse movements in your viewports, having a middle mouse button can actually help with specific kinds of movement. And then the second thing is you have a very big touchpad, but what I actually found really useful that is not really advertised anywhere is that this touchpad also has pen support. So. It has 1024 layers of pressure sensitivity if you get a compatible MPP 2.0 pen. I just got a generic pen from Amazon for around 30 euros, I think. They're active pens, so they do need battery. And while it's not as accurate as a Wacom, for example, it's much easier for me to just carry around that one pen in my backpack versus having a separate drawing tablet if I quickly want to just jot down something or have it as an extra way to quickly whiteboard or do another drawing, for example especially how you can combine the ASUS dial 
on one side so you can quickly change for example your brush strokes and then on the other hand have that drawing tablet surface. You can really see that this laptop was really made by someone who had creatives in their mind at least as it's really intuitive to in one hand quickly just draw out and then meanwhile at the same time very easily and intuitively change for example your brush sizes or your colors. Now of course you can get this general hardware overview from any tech YouTuber. There are plenty of them out there but I bought this laptop specifically for game development and my use cases. So I think that you'll probably be most interested to in my experience how I make my own games Forge Industry through this laptop basically. I've been using it for about a month now, most of which I've been on location like now for example, moving around and I haven't really had that much problems. To give you an idea of my workflow, the two main programs that I work with are Blender for 3D modeling as I do most of the 3D models of our game and Unity to put everything together, mostly working in the inspector or working in engine. So less of the actual code part, although this laptop can definitely display code very clearly as well, and more the actual building models in Unity, building the scenes and stuff like that. And I think the first thing that's really nice here is I come from a 34 inch ultra wide monitor at home. So I am used to having a lot of real estate for either my Blender or my Unity. And I actually don't feel like this 16 inch 4K display leaves me cramped for space. I am quite comfortable. The only downside of course is because I'm used to an ultra wide, which was really a lot of extra space. My viewport for the game itself is a little bit cramped now, but I can still access all of my inspectors, my hierarchy and my project files at, with plenty of ease. As it also has a dedicated GPU, performance has gone up quite a lot, even though this suddenly now needs to push a 4K screen in our game instead of just a regular 1080p screen. And stuff like Blender now also works. Of course, granted, I never do anything too complicated in Blender, but even just having a cube in Blender on my old laptop already slowed performance down to about 15 to 20 FPS, which was really annoying, even if you had a mouse as an input, as you were just constantly misclicking everything. So I think that part of game dev is really good. More of the you know creative part is I also use the Creative Cloud application a lot, so Photoshop and Premiere Pro. Video editing is really nice with this thing because of the dedicated NVIDIA GPU, I can really quickly edit out my videos and do timeline scrubbing. Once again, the ASUS dial comes in here as well as there are dedicated Creative Cloud integrations. So I can scrub through my timeline, through my footage and through my effects, for example, very easily. I can also assign custom shortcuts to it and just the big screen 4K real estate is really helping me out in that regard. Color accuracy is also really nice, although I usually don't have to worry about it that much because I assume that you will be watching this on your phone or somewhere like that. And then lastly, we have Photoshop, as I said, I mainly make art thumbnails in it or I make memes in it or whatever. And I often use the Lasso tool, which is also very nice because it has integration with that pen. So I don't have to, if I don't have a mouse on me, I can still have quite accurate drawing with just a pen on its own to, for example, cut out certain parts of an image. Now, I've been sounding pretty positive about this laptop, but I do want to say that there are some things that I have been a bit annoyed by. And whilst they're not deal breakers, I think this is the important stuff for you as well to know that what are the things that I have been a bit annoyed by. And first one is this laptop out of the box was very unstable. I don't know why. Um, and I ended up actually having to reinstall all of Windows because I was just having constant Windows Explorer freezes. This was also my first experience with Windows 11. I don't know if it was a Windows problem or if it was a laptop problem or a driver problem that I didn't get to solve on the first original install, but I basically had to reformat everything. Luckily, I hadn't really used the laptop that much yet, so I just lost a bit of time there. Now, the thing that I do want to warn about is the ASUS dial. I've really been trying to use it a lot and don't get me wrong, it is really cool and it is really useful in some points, but I'm actually disappointed mostly by how little you can customize it. First off is that, yes, you have support for Creative Cloud, you have support for your browser, but that's basically it. There's not a lot of support by default. And I also haven't really found any online communities where they're sharing profiles, for example, about how they optimally use the dial. It's all something that you need to configure yourself. And if you don't spend the time in configuring the dial, you will never use it, let me tell you. You'll just use it as a fancy volume rocker. And hey, it works pretty good as a volume rocker, but that's not the real point of the dial. You configure it through the ASUS dial software, 
what I miss there is that, okay, pulling up the wheel is very intuitive and using the wheel is very smooth as well. However, you can only assign up-down configurations, basically. Move forward or move backward, increase or decrease your volume. I can't make a single standalone macro, basically, where I'm, for example, to play pause my music. No, I can only press down upon it, open a menu for play pause, and then manually assign both going left or right on the dial to play pause. Now, this is a very simple example, but it does take quite a lot of time to set up everything and the interface isn't really that intuitive, in my opinion. So it's very easy if you buy this laptop to get lured in by the dial. I certainly did. And you really need to force yourself almost to keep using it or you're just gonna ignore it very soon. Some other things that I'm not a fan of is the charger. This requires a 240 watt charger, which I feel is a bit overkill. Although of course it is a very fast laptop, but the charger is very big, very bulky. I came from, of course, a very lightweight laptop that only needed 45 or 65 watts to work with. So having some to lug around that big charger is also quite an inconvenience for me. Maybe you're used to it. For me, it was just something that I wasn't really used to before. And it is a bit annoying because not just does the laptop weigh quite a bit, the charger actually weighs a lot as well. And then another thing that I'm a bit scared of, but I don't know if this is just me being uninformed or not, is the longevity of the OLED display. By default, there's some ASUS software on it that will do pixel refreshes and that will install screensavers to save the OLEDs. But I just don't know because this screen can go very bright at 500 nits and it actually physically hurts to look at the display in those use cases usually. But I am a bit scared of burn-in. I don't know which generation of OLED or whatever it is and if Windows is really caught up to that. So I may be completely uninformed here, but that's just something that I'm a bit like scared of how is the longevity going to be of this laptop? Am I still gonna have the same beautiful display two years down the line from now? In conclusion, while I do have some problems, I do really like this laptop. ASUS didn't sponsor me, but hey ASUS, if you have any other cool pro art stuff, because I do in general like the stuff they have there, feel free to send it out or something, I don't know. But no, in all seriousness, I paid around 2,200 euros for this. I'll put on some conversions or whatever in currency. And it's definitely a lot for a laptop. But I feel like if I'm someone who likes to look at himself as a professional and who will be on the move for multiple months and wants to be able to actually effectively work, this was a good purchase of me. I would definitely suggest increasing the storage because one terabyte is not enough. So keep in mind that cost, but SSDs have gone down very far. And I do think that this was a sound investment for just having creative work and it's probably one of the better laptops that is really good at all around creative work. You have a lot of other laptops, like for example, the MSI Creator was one that I looked at, but the main problem there was it only had a micro SD card slot, whereas I really wanted that full slice slot. I don't know why MSI could call it a Creator laptop, yet not have that full size SD card support. Kind of a misser in my opinion, otherwise it would have been another laptop. I was looking forward to testing. And yeah, that basically wraps up the video. What are you currently working on? I'm actually quite interested to hear, are you working on laptop gang? Are you desktop gang? Or are you just, I don't know, making board games gang using just pen and paper? Leave us a comment down below. I love to see what you guys are up to. If you're new here, we make game developer related content. This is maybe a bit of a different video. We don't really do hardware reviews that often, but as I said before, I paid a lot of money for this laptop and I wanna get every piece of content out of it that I can. So if you're interested in game dev related content, things that you should watch out for, or just wanna learn more about our own Gameforge industry as well, be sure to subscribe down below and leave us a like as it really helps us out and you get this kind of content two times a week. That's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.